is that pandemics, wars, and recessions are platforms for resetting the distribution of wealth. I take that again. Pandemics, wars, and recessions are platforms for resetting the distribution of wealth. And it's important we, um, it's important we, 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 we get this very clearly. And what does that mean? And that's the fifth question I will ask, the last question. So what we should concentrate on is what will change in legal practice? And what do I need to do in order to be relevant in the coming wealth redistribution? And um, the first question, so I will spend the next few minutes looking at the fifth question on what will change and what we need to do in that to be relevant in the coming wealth redistribution. Now, I say history is repeating itself again. And a number of times I like to, I like to have this, um, to show this video. It's a very short video of draft, but it, I think it best explains what is happening now and what will happen in the next immediate. So please just watch. I hope you can all see the video. Yes. No, I can't say. Okay. Yes, you can see the video. So you can see the yes, plane you can drive. See. And I can see the video. Where is the video? Yes, I can see the video. To me, the game of life. Everyone play his own game, for our own game. And let's keep watching. Who are the masters of this game? Who are the strategic ones? So the question is what will be left for the unprepared? The game was going very smooth. All of a sudden, things come and they reset. And permit me to read this. This was written by, by, by a colleague of mine. And by the way, please, I want to say a very big thank you to every um, every my other my colleague in Law Pavilion. I mean, they all, it wasn't just me that put this together. We all did, and they really helped. Now, I'll just read this very quickly. It says, how pandemics and war destroy existing economic order and build new ones. Though the human cause of pandemics are dreadful, the long-run economic effects are not always so. For instance, the first recorded pandemic in human history, that's the Black Death, Eliminated, eliminated one to two thirds of the population of Europe, shattering the economic and social order. It actually created the economy, uh, the opportunity for a new economic order. Before the Second World War, which started in 1939, the American economy was underperforming. There were so many untapped potentials that nobody realized. It took the crisis of the Second World War to bring the best out of America. By the end of the Second World War, America had developed such outstanding industrial capacity that I saw it take over as a dominant economy. And want to see how we, inter how we, we, we put that into legal practice. During the war, 17 million new civilians were created, civilian jobs were created. Industrial productivity increased by 96%. And corporate profits after taxes doubled. The government expenditures helped bring about the business recovery. War needs directly consumed over one third of the output of industry, but the expanded productivity ensured a remarkably remarkable supply of consumer goods to the people as well. America was the only 
country that saw an expansion of consumer goods despite wartime rationing. By 1944, as a result of wage increases and overtime pay, real weekly wages before taxes in manufacturing were 50% higher than 1939. The war also created entire new technologies, new industries, and associated human skills. The war brought full employment and a fairer distribution of income. Blacks and women entered the workforce for the first time. Wages increased, so did savings. The war brought the consolidation of union strength and far-reaching changes in agricultural life. Housing conditions were better than they had been before. Public opinion that the veterans should not return jobless to a country without opportunity and education. That led to the GI Bill, which helped lay the foundation for the market for expansion that followed. The creates said especially a new class of businessmen, inventors, and middle class. Historians, economists, and politicians, and this is where I'm going, have long wondered why this remarkable social and economic mobilization of latent human and physical resources required a war. In a nutshell, wars, pandemics, crises create tragedies. They also create opportunities. It all depends on the viewpoint of leaders and minds engaged during the war. Ladies and gentlemen, let's quickly dissect how we think this will affect the legal industry and how we think we should reposition ourselves. So the question is what we change and what do we do to survive this crisis and beyond? And it's not only survivor to come out on top because some people will definitely come out much better. It's a redistribution of wealth. Oh, the the of a new rule of play. And I will go, I have about four or five points here. I will run through them. So the first thing that's can changing mute our mics, can we all have all the mic on mute? Please. So the first thing that's changing is court engagement, and this is I mean this is basically <laughs> But when we are talking of court engagement, about hearing. there is e-filing that many of us, because the current protocols is during COVID-19, there will be a quick increased provision of better capacity for e-filing. So in court engagement, e-filing will be the order of the day. Of course, we have started seeing, um, let's say, um, um, remote hearing coming in in triples. There will be higher speed of processing because the court now is being moved to quickly consider court or case management systems. And so they are going to employ more technology. So the, process, the speed of getting things done in the court will increase. And this is going to expose digital divide. I, I mean, a, a colleague was cracking a joke in one of his articles. He said, recently, a lawyer was, was joking and he said that his neighbor was confused because he kept hearing, um, my Lord, I can't hear you. My Lord, can you see me? And the neighbor was thinking that, is he talking to God or who? Not knowing that he was remote hearing in his house. But that's court engagement, and I think that's just the immediate response. More critical things that we should start looking at is client engagement. Client engagement is going to change completely. And I put this under three headings. One is existing relationships. Existing relationship is going to change. So even the clients you have, how you are going to be able to keep them is going to change because suddenly their demands, their expectations will change. And it's not their fault. They are going to demand speed because everything, of course, there's been, a, there's, there's, right now, there's going to there's been a lot of, a, a lot in the system. There's going to be a lot of piled up issues, piled up disputes. The moment, everything comes back, the court opens, and is able to do um, e-filing everything very well. There's going to be an avalanche of 
processes. There's going to be a lot of court matters. So speed will be a major issue. How will you do that? In client engagement, we are looking at remote hearing for courts. Trust me, clients will likely not come to your office. They will most likely expect you to engage them virtually. So you are going to be using your remote hearing not only for the courts, but even to engage your clients. In terms of um, client engagement, there's going to be what I call anticipatory consultative engagement. Sorry, I'm not trying to use big English. But in sales, there's something called consultative selling. Gone are the days when because I know you, you are my neighbor, you are my friend, or you are colleagues, it's easier, I can easily, you, you, because of friendship, you engage me. Now, there's going to be real demand for subject matter expertise. And so during this lockdown, you've got to be able to do subject matter research, look at your firm, whether maybe you operate mainly in maritime or in, or in aviation industry, for example. Your best bet right now is your clients, they will start to want, you have to anticipate what their needs will likely be. So you're going to study how is this pandemic also affecting the industry of your clients or the industry you play in. Because your clients will not expect to just bring invoice. They expect you to be able to advise them what are the risks, what are the things to, um, to look out for and all those ones. Then clients will require more deliberate feedbacks. So the way you, and I'll, I'll get to that very shortly. So the way you engage them, the way you, you send them communication and those ones, that is going to change. Then acquisition of new clients, of new relationships will also change. Because don't have to do this when, oh, to get new people, you go to clubs, you meet them, you know. But clubs are on holidays. So how do you see your clients? How do new clients get to see you? In fact, I just got an email today, IBA, the almighty IBA, the largest gathering of global gathering of lawyers, is not holding this year anymore. Why? Because of COVID-19. So the next IBA is in France in 2021. It's going to be a virtual meeting. How are you prepared for such a year? Because I know a lot of law firms, a lot of lawyers spend so much money so that you can get international clients. All of a sudden, the world has become flat. International clients will find you on your website. So the question is, what web presence do you have? Do you have blogs? And then, I will go on this. Now, there's going to be a buff of legal platforms for finding and engaging lawyers. Because suddenly people will start relying on platforms, on legal listings for them to find lawyers because people will likely not travel from Lagos to Abuja to go and look for lawyers. They will rather look, let me just see reviews because they may not be able to come to your firm. So all the investments, and, and these are realities in, in, in having a two-shot law office and all those ones, those investments need to count now. And those investments, some of them need to quickly go to your website. They need to quickly go to your tech use. The vehicles, you know, you will drive to your client firm and you know the, 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 the perception is now going to be virtual perception. And it's part of we get up and we're prepared for that. So court engagement, client engagement. And sorry, let me just go back to court engagement. It's going to expose the digital divide. There's going to be urgent need for you to digitize your documents in your firm and your practice, to digitize your practice. You're going to need to learn the use of video conferencing tech tools. Everybody's talking about Zoom, but not only Zoom, truly. Because there are some others that are going to be using Microsoft Teams. There are others that will be using Google Meet. There are others that will be using WebEx. And you've got to be prepared to know how to use all of these because it's the new normal. The third one that I think will change and what we need to do to survive and not only survive to come on top is law firm management. Yes, there's remote work. But look, remote work doesn't just happen. There are things that drive or that make remote work effective. Now, one of them is work process management and automation. And I tell people, last week we were having board meeting, and I was saying that, look, in the, uh, for the past two months in our office, we've been working, in fact, maybe we've worked harder than before. And the reason is simple because we started doing some things which we did not even know COVID-19 would come, would, would, would come. 
We had productivity tracking. We had software that helped us track productivity of everyone. These are the ways remote work will work. Otherwise, if you want to work remotely, you are just giving your lawyers or the, the participants of your firm, you're just going to give them a holiday. And it's never sustainable. Now, as remote work is going to grow, there is also knocking on the back door, remote freelancing. Meaning, I can be in my room and I can work for three or four, five law firms because there'll be remote freelancing. And this has been happening a lot in tech world. I can tell you for free, we're here in Nigeria, we have software developers in Germany, we have software developers um, that are not even working with us, they are elsewhere in other, in other companies, and they just give us three to four hours. So there's going to be remote freelancing. How well, as a young lawyer, are you prepared for that? It's not the time to start looking for CV anymore. It's the time to go and sharpen your, um, your profile on, on, um, on LinkedIn and have your virtual, your, your e-presence well positioned. There's going to be the need for document management in law firms. Now, you, you want to work on files, you want to work on briefs, and the file is in the office. You've got to digitize everything. The definition of library is going to change. It's no longer about the four walls. So you're going to be experiencing platforms that have your e-books on your computer so that you don't need to go to the library. And I'm sure the privileges and um, um, committee will also begin to re, uh, will also review. It's likely to get become an SCN will likely no longer be about how big your library is. It's how big your resources are. And resources can either be physical or virtual. So what does this tell us? What do we need to do? Urgent need for acquisition of efficient legal process automation system. Sorry, the good English. In tech balance, they call it TRP. But in legal balance, case management software. This has become a case alone. If you have a lot of are not using a case management software, is the time to quickly build that capacity. Because So you guys are please unmute yourself. I've had to yes. Thank you very much, sir. So I'll say that there's urgent need for acquisition of efficient legal process automation systems. In IT parlance, it's called ERP. That's what manufacturer, manufacturing com countries, um, companies use. We call it uh, enterprise resource planning. But in legal space, it's called case management system. No matter how small your law firm is, to build a virtual efficiency in your system, you've got to have case management software. Otherwise, you, it's going to be difficult for you to keep track with courts. It's going to be difficult for you to keep track with clients when you can't see them. You've got to have efficient tools that even when you are sleeping, the system is helping you to automate and watch everything. It's called robotic process automation. It doesn't have to do with robots. And as, as a roundup, because I, I know I have, um, I have um, a time limitation. Now, the fourth thing is there's going to be industrial evolution stroke industrial revolution. Real estate, for example, is going to change. And I call it real estate evolution. Now, before now, you need a big space to operate as an office. Now I'm in my office, two big buildings, and I'm the only person there with the gate man. So I'm sure you'll be wondering, now I need to rethink my use of space. So there'll be reduction in space requirements because offices are now in our bedrooms, and now in our city rooms, in the corner of our, of our houses. Now, what that tells us is there will also be increase in demand for shared tech-enabled infrastructure. So for lawyers that are into um, real estate, into properties, what you could be looking for is not big space anymore. It's likely going to be tech-enabled spaces. So now you will see people, law firms, that will just share a ground floor. And all they need to operate, they don't need more than two or three people to be in the office because you have remote workers everywhere. And I will talk about the because there's going to be more collaborations. You just need space, but that space, you must have fiber link there. You must be able to attend court, process, um, court, um, court, court proceedings and it must be very fast. 
So that's what people will be looking out for. So if you have clients that are in real, real, um, in real estate and you're advising them or you, you, you are selling real estate, you've got to look at how to tech enable your infrastructure. Because property evaluation will now be tech infrastructure based, no longer location based. I'm sorry, it's like I'm, I'm busting some bubbles. And these are realities we are seeing. So it's no longer, I don't even need to be in, um, in the, on the island or on high brow areas. Because people may not even necessarily need to come there. What they need now is how they can see me online, virtually. And so if I will evaluate a building, if I live in Abulia Ega, for example, please, without, me, uh, without any, I'm just giving an example. Now, if I can be living in outskirts of Lagos, or I can even be outside Lagos or, out, or anywhere in Nigeria, in my village, all I need is very good tech infrastructure. So if I have such property that has that, and look, anybody can come in there and they can work as if they are in London. That is what evaluation of property would be based on. And then there is also industrial revolution. Now we've been talking about this many times, blockchain revolution. And don't forget, as we're having this discussion on legal practice, every other profession is having this discussion. I can tell you for free, because I'm involved with some of them, architecture, the building industry is having this kind of discussion. So many countries are industries. And so what it's telling everyone is everyone needs to go digital. And so the way commercial transaction will be done is going to change and it's going to change very fast from now onwards. So smart contracts, I we thought would be four or five years time, is going to be heavily upon us now. And let me bust some bubbles. I've been saying this for about two years. Electioneering briefs will most likely begin to look at smart contracts. Because as the world is evolving, elections will be built on blockchain technology. And the lawyers that can argue and handle those briefs, very juicy, I'm sure we all know, are those ones that understand the blockchain technology and what smart contract means and the nuances and what to look out for and what not to look out for. I mean, the whole of last year was about AI revolution, the year of legal analytics and predictive analytics. I, I, time will not permit me to talk heavily on this. It's a whole session on its own. So I, I move on as, as, as I'm done on my, my slide. Law firm collaborations. There will be a lot of mergers that we're beginning to see. And there will be a lot of loose collaborations. So it's not even necessarily that I'm merging. But look, because firms are going to be placing a lot of demands, you are, you are good in one area and that firm is good in that area, we can quickly collaborate. Nobody needs to come to my office to see that it's a big or small office. We can collaborate virtually, and a lot of this will happen. And what will be your main advantage is how tech-driven you are, how tech-driven your processes are, how tech-driven your legal research is. And I'll give you a very simple example. I, I, I was at the, um, I think it was Nigerian British Chamber of Commerce uh, earlier in the year, and there was this, there was this uh, um, roundtable with, um, sorry, Mobilito, please, if it's five minutes to go, please just tell me so I can quickly round up. I tend to tell too many stories. It's just to drive the point home. Now, now there was this roundtable discussion. Sir? I'll say it's five minutes to go so I can take questions, but it's okay. Just please go on. Okay. I, I'm rounding up anyway. Now, there, there was this discussion, and, and there was um, the, the, the chairman of Stambic IBTC. Um, oh, what, what's his name now? Oh. How could I just quickly forget, forget now? Peter Said. Peter Said. Oh, thank you. Um, um, I, I cannot be surprised. And he was, you know, he was on the stage and he was talking about how he built his brand and all those ones. And he said he was in the, an airport in South Africa. And then someone called, someone just came to meet him. I was greeting him, oh, you are Mr. Peter Said. No, we know you. Thank you. You know this and that. We, 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 we respect what you have, you have done in the banking industry. And that, look, there's just one question that look, your, your bank was acquired by the biggest bank in Africa. But somehow, in the management, you managed to keep, or the, the, the new uh, merger managed to keep all your people. In fact, the people controlling the, big, the, um, the whole bank now is, are the people that were with you. 
And then we're saying, for example, even the branches or the, 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 yeah, the regional heads outside Nigeria are controlled by your people. They have to push people from Nigeria to other regions to head the place. So the question is, who acquired who? And that is how things are going to be. Because the firms that have given painstaking attention to tech-driven advantages, that have given painstaking attention to work process automation, they are the ones that we carry the order of the day because they are the ones that have the capacity and the capability to drive efficiency in the new normal. And lastly, you've got to plan ahead. Someone said, never waste a crisis. You've got to focus on expertise and efficiency. You've got to get techie. In fact, my colleagues wrote it, get techie, get techie, get techie. Invest in technology. You invest in case management solutions, invest in legal research, invest in websites, invest in tablets, invest in computers. You've got to learn computer skills. It's a new normal. And very importantly, you've got to collaborate. You cannot be an island on your own because you've got to live on collective intelligence. And that's what makes AI very, very important in this, in, in this day and age. So I won't, I, won't, I won't go through all this. I mean, the hows are always there. But the key how for me that we need to ask ourselves is how relevant will I be in this new economy? And um, stay ahead in this race against time. Because in times like this, being on the faster trajectory matters more than having a great plan. Because plans quickly become outdated. Ladies and gentlemen, I say a very big thank you for having me. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> thank you very, very, very much, Mr. Olugasa. I hope we can all hear me. I hope you can all hear me. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, we can. Thank yes, you, we can. Mr. Olugasa. It's awesome. it's awesome having you um, talk to us. And um, well I'm excited about the things you said. Uh, the future of law is blurry, but um, it's actually not as... Um, not as uncertain as it looks for those that choose to to stay on top of the game and and that is what you have done we have tried to to open our eyes to a lot of the things that we should know at this time i'm excited about the way you have gone with the slides i'm excited with, with, with where you picked it from and and then it, it's it's indeed um very 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 thought provoking I will start with a question that is already here before I get lost in talking about the future of law because some of us are positioning. And let me say this whilst you are dropping your questions. Uh, a, a friend um, asked me, well, I call the person my friend for, for, for what it is worth. A friend asked me and said um, that, Charles, but why exactly are you so, so particular about these things must this information be, be 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 shared? You know, if you guys know these things, why can't you just keep it to yourself? Why is it that people must keep talking about uh, the future of law? This is not future of law. Post COVID, in COVID, you know, there's a lot of conversations around this. And said, no, you know, when you have information, you keep them. You know, you keep it to yourself, and then you are able to use it as some kind of a leverage, an advantage. But um, the rules of the game has changed. There was a time that that was the way it, it could be. You have an information, you audit. And when you audit, you just go and launch it out suddenly, and it comes like, it springs up like a surprise to your opponent. Even in a court of law, as, as, as backward as it is, you will find out that uh, you cannot spring surprises in court. You know, everything has to be front-loaded. That's the, the, the game of the, that's the order of the, the, the nature of the game. And the world we are in now is such that if you are not able to collaborate, like Mr. Oppa said in, in rounding up, you will just find out that you will not just be lonely, you will be alone, you know, mm -hmm. and then you will be phased out. So I'll take Jamilola up on this question. Yeah, and his question says, uh, what are the plans a legal technology organization like Law Pavilion, what plans are they putting in order 
to work towards this goal of a tech-driven law society. The fact being that at the number one legal law of Nigeria, in Nigeria, the whole of the legal society will be looking. Okay, so basically, what is Law Pavilion doing in all of these things? Well, okay, let me ask Mr. Lucas to answer that question first. And um, okay, Mr. Lucas, let me let me have you take that. Okay, sir. Th th thank you very much. Um, now, as I said, we have been very, very busy in the last two months. And so if you ask me what have we been busy doing, we have been busy cooking. Because the things we thought would take about three years to come, which we are preparing, we had been preparing for for the past four years, quickly came on us. And so we decided to quickly fast track many of them. And so we're building foolproof, and I say foolproof tech solutions that integrate courts. Okay. Uh, we're, integrating, we're, we're doing foolproof tech solutions that integrate courts with law firms, with clients, with everyone. So it's a whole big platform that we're, pro we're providing. And at the same time, we're also coming up with tools that will make things much, much easy for you to file your, your matters. So um, in the next one or two weeks, you're going to be hearing a lot of new things coming on board because we studied the system. I mean, we've been studying the system for 15 years and we very politely and very modestly, we know where the shoes have been pinching. And so we're coming up with solutions in the next one, two weeks that will, that will change the game completely. Thank you very much. So I think your mic is mute, is mute sir. Yes. Mr. Larry Fashola, I have noted your comment is fantastic. You are, com com uh, you are, you are commending Mr. Lugasa. And I, I want to chip in this thing. Uh, and, I, I, and I want to ask Mr. Lugasa. So I'm not sure of this um, statement, but um, there is a conversation that is ongoing and it says that an average business that exists now must cease to mm. exist as it is known. And this is what I mean. So what we have now are law firms, hospitals, engineering firms, real estate firms, and all of that. But there's a conversation that says that in the future, which has already come, there can only be one kind of company, and that company is a technology company. However, you have technology companies offering legal services. So law firms, you know, technology law companies that are law firms, technology companies that are hospitals, technology companies that are hotels, technology companies that are, that are, that are. Now, I, I want to know how true that is, because that is really, really, if you ask me, uh, it's ambiguous, it's bogus to say every company now going to be a tech company offering service in different areas. I want to please shed some, some light on that. Okay. Th thank you very much, sir. Um, in answering that, I, I, I know the first, the first um, what we easily come to, to our minds is, oh, there is the, there's the RPC. You, I mean, you, you can't, a tech company can't run a law firm. Or, you know, there's a protection. But the, uh, well, I won't call it a fortunate thing, but the issue is the definition is changed completely. And I'll explain to you what I mean by that. The underlying concept is that there are different industries. But right now, the way things are going, that the world has broken. So before we say, oh, this is a, law firm, this is a tech company, but whether it's, it's, it, they are together, is both a, a law firm has now become a tech company. A tech company has become a law firm. And so it's going to be the, 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 the season of platforms. And what I mean by that is even when you have law firms, traditionally it's a law firm, but in operation is a tech company. So you're going to be seeing law firms actually um, funding and building tech products. Tech solutions to be operating as if they are tech companies, but they are law firms. So it's a complete new paradigm in operations. Yes, it's not that, oh, tech companies will sit up and begin to 
take over the work of lawyering. But I'm saying lawyers will take over tech and bring it into lawyering, and then the world collapses. That's my thinking about that. I think that is, that, that, that is apt. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Ogudasa. I have another question right here. And uh, basically, is saying, uh, uh, I'll, you know, you talked about RPC now. That's exactly what I thought. This person is worried about, talking about RPC. That our, our, and, I, and I think the person is talking about, that is a uh, um, funny thing. I think the person is talking about uh, freelance lawyers. Um, okay. Madam Lawa, please, can you mute your mic? The person is talking about freelance um, lawyers. So he's asking, you know, he's just wondering that, um, what was happening here? The, be the person is just wondering, can you hear me? Hello, yes, sir. Hello? Hello, sir. We can, we can hear you, sir. I said, so the person is talking about freelance lawyers. I'm wondering, will this not constitute advertisement, you know, for lawyers? And, you know, lawyers are not allowed to advertise. And that's the person's question. I don't know if you want, you want to go around. How are lawyers supposed to go around and find their way around all these things? Oh, oh, okay. I, I, I will answer that. My, my humble submission, and it's going to be in two ways. The first one is... Hmm, just the same way that in one month, civil procedures changed. And it was a forced change because of the realities on ground. So the same way, the rule of engagement will change. I'm sure it will happen. Because I also know that the habitats of the profession, are also, um, they, they, they have the welfare of lawyers in mind. So they will also need to rethink the process to see how the profession will not only survive, but will come tops. So I know a number of things are going to change. But let's even look at it. The people that started with don't advertise, they themselves have changed it. But aside that, even within the ambits of the rule, you are allowed to be listed on legal platforms. So that's why you have the, the IMD, the um, who is who legal 500, the IFLR, they are listings. And so you see a lot of lawyers are on LinkedIn because they are professional listings. So in freelancing, it's just a matter of professional listing and people will look for you. So it's a matter of being available to take the jobs. Whether you're, you're going to be work, you're going to, um, um, to, to give expert opinions to law firms, or to, or to clients or whatever, but I know it is here to stay because the demands of the new normal is actually placing that and, and requiring it. Thank you very much, Mr. Lucas. Somebody is asking, what are the skills that lawyers, are, uh, what, what skills are lawyers supposed to have uh, at, in, in, this, in this time? What kind of skills are lawyers supposed to, to have, tech skills particularly? And um, somebody also said, I think, what you will have are legal firms operating on IT, IT platform, not tech companies offering legal services. It's the lawyers that are using the IT platform and not the IT firms offering yeah. services. services. Yeah. I think I understand yeah. the person's quarrel, but um, um, let's answer what are the skills, tech skills that you think lawyers require? And somebody's also asking, what do you advise a probate lawyer um, to do in this time? Okay, I, I think those are two questions. Okay, so I, I tell people, no, you have to say law is an ass. So the same thing, tech is just an ass, just an enabler, it's just a platform. So the first thing is you must really still be on top of your game. Your subject matter expertise must be very, very on top. So don't think because you know tech tools, then it will automatically transport you or translate you to become an authority in your business. No, it won't. But at the same time, being an authority in your area and not having tech, being tech enabled is a big disadvantage. In fact, is akin to somebody, what they said that, look, you are winking in the dark. You know what you are doing, but nobody else knows. So my suggestion would be to, um, for the tech skills that lawyers need to quickly know now, number one is, I will call it, um, 
Okay, let that do not come with nomenclatures. Number one, you need to be familiar with your devices. That's the first thing. So you need to know how to use your phones. There are so many options on our phones that we don't even know how to use. You need to know how to use your laptops, even if not laptops, at least tablets. So you must be familiar with devices. You must be familiar with your normal Microsoft Office. And I think these are basic things. But having mastered the basics, there are some key things you must learn. One is how to use legal software. Because the way law firms will engage lawyers henceforth is going to be via software, is going to be via platforms. You're going to have to use it because your clients will expect. And I remember when I, when I, when I joined um, Nigerian Botany Company, I mean, in, in those days, even though it's over 20 years ago now, it, you can't operate in that place if you don't have email. You, you must use your email because that's how everybody communicates. So those are some basic things that we shouldn't be talking about anymore any, anyway. So things like knowing how to use um, um, your email, how to use social media. It's not advertisement. You are positioning yourself as, an, um, as a subject matter expert. Things like getting to know how to use blogs, how to write, how to write and put it online. So that people, when people are doing a research, they want to find a lawyer in that area. Your name comes out first. You've got to know many of those things. And then as a firm, you've got to digitize your documents. And these are key things that we need. So I won't go ahead and start saying you must learn blockchain, you must learn AI. Those ones are, yes, they're in the advance and they're important. But even the basic ones, please, we must not use them. And then the virtual communication systems, we must be on top of them. So you need to learn, even while we are still on, on, on lockdown. Because as you rightly said, sir, the lockdown will likely be extensive. Mm -hmm. It's been called off now for us in the office. We haven't resumed because we are also still watching. But well, it's good because we are able to work remotely. And so we are not really, um, really feeling it. And these are things that everyone needs to invite. Mr. Okba, thank you very much. Uh, before I take any more questions, I would, I would just like to say a few things, you know, especially because of what, um, what's his name, uh, Mr. David Enshaw uh, talked about. Uh, but Mr. Okba, just whilst you are waiting, there's someone that asked a question about blockchain and a bit of uh, expose around, uh, around it. So I'll come back to you on that. Um, but I just want to talk to somebody that has the kind of mindset that I have. And that person is like um, Mr. Ensho. I don't know who that person is. But one thing I know that is going to happen and that is started happening already is that everyone, of course, lawyers in this context particularly, will have to become what I call fluid. Fluid means you're just, you're just going to have to be like water, such that uh, once you are poured, nobody needs to find your path. The water will just find its path. Anyone that remains rigid in the, in the kind of things that are happening now will find out that um, he or she will be faced out. Things are changing and there's no point trying to think it's the same. It will never remain the same. And there will never be a time like COVID was and COVID is no more. By the time COVID-19 is gone and then Nigeria is declared COVID-19 free, life will not be the same. People will start doing things differently. Like we start uh, 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 even in our chambers, we've not even resumed. Everybody has had to work remotely. And productivity is good. Whether you like it or not, because of the change, um, uh, um, um, inflow and the kind of work you do will reduce. But what you need to now do is to go back to the drawing board and then start agile realignment. Start active um, movement because things are now different. So this thought of saying, now I wanted to address the question of technology. So technology is not just like an industry, like law, like medicine, like engineering. No. Technology is a default kind of tool. Everybody needs it now, and everybody must use it. So it's not enough to say, I know Mr. Alpha is trying, trying to be careful that I won't ask you to go and start learning codes and start learning languages and start learning programming languages and all of those things. And he's trying to be very modest. I don't think I like all those things myself. But the truth about it is that I've come to understand that even though I may not be able to code or develop like a regular software developer or programmer, I must understand what they do. I must understand what I can achieve with what they know. And every lawyer must, especially for those that are in law businesses or 
uh, 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 you must understand what those things can do, how they work, and then you must be able to relate to them. In the near future, the future that we have found ourselves already now, the truth about it is that lawyers that can code will become in high demand. Lawyers that understand software will become in high demand. Mr. Paul Lugasa runs a non-law firm. Law Pavilion is not a law firm. But they have hired over 50 lawyers. They have in their employment over 50 lawyers. How many, how many law firms in Nigeria even has 50 lawyers? But it means that lawyers are now going to be able to find expressions in non-law firms and they'll be comfortable. And this is not legal departments of companies. This is not as company secretaries. They are in a technology law firm and they are doing law. The people that are in the law pavilion working for Mr. Olugasa are not, are not going to court and they are not maybe in active litigation, but yes, they are in their jobs as lawyers and it's their skills as lawyers that have secured them that job. So lawyers will begin to have reached a state whereby we, might, we now need to think out of the box, or rather, without the box, and understand that technology is a tool. And anything we are doing now that we cannot deploy technology to do, then it's, 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 it's pointless. It's a waste of time. It's going, to be, it's going to fizzle out. And so I'll just go to the next question. Uh, somebody has talked about blockchain. I'll just take um, the next one together after I'm talking about it together. Now that law firms need to embrace technology, what are the technological infrastructures and software that law firms need to acquire to digitize in this new um, normal? And then somebody added technology is a service. Hmm. I think I like that. So, Mr. Mr. Um, Okwe, um, what are yes. the skills that are required? And then, can you give us an, a bit of um, information about blockchain technology as it affects lawyers? Oh, oh, oh. Thank, thank you very much, sir. So, I, I'll, I'll start with the blockchain technology. Um, that is a very, it's a wide, but, but I will just try to break it very, uh, very simple here. And um, so without going into the technology, dis um, um, uh, to, to, without going to the technology description of what it is, is a system wherein contracts can be entered and executed without human interaction or without human intervention. And when I talk about blockchain, I give a very simple example. Very funny, though. though. In those days, you know, you have NEPA, that's a PCN. And then some, you have your meter in your house. Somebody comes to monitor it, to read the, um, to read the meter, and then they come and give you your bill. Then you have to go and pay the NEPA bill, and then if you don't pay, somebody comes and cuts off your light, and then if if the cost of power supply, if you can, if you if you are if you are fortunate to be there at that part time, you can start arguing and say, ah, no, God, please don't know, I know those ones. And uh, there was this community that someone came to cut their lights. They come that don't have lights for. They allowed him to climb, and when he reached the top, they told him he cannot come down. They wanted to, you know. But the issue is there was there were go betweens. Now when the Automated meter came. It reduced and completely removed all those middlemen. So all you need to do is go and buy, load your card. As soon as you have your card, you load, um, of course, you, you, um, you, you put it in your, in your meter. It's reading when the credit is exhausted, the light automatically goes off. You don't have any NEPA official to go and start arguing with or to go and start harassing. It costs itself by default. The same thing with hotels. Before now, you know, there's this um, the, the, the card entry. So if you don't pay, you just won't be allowed to come in. So the same thing blockchain is going to enable across all industries. It's going to enable that, especially in real estate. I was in a conference two years ago now when Kenya, a top official from Kenya, was telling us, it was an African tech um, conference, I was telling about how Kenya is already converting their, their land registry into blockchain. So it's a, there's something called, um, uh, they call it um, digital assets. So your, 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 your document, your, your CFO, and all those ones will be converted to digital assets. Your, your, your investment documents, your certificates, but converted to digital assets. So to transfer ownership of property, we not need you to be signing. You have a smart contract. The moment the money hits my account, 
the name on that sea of O should be automatically changed to this person. You are buying a car and then it's a smart contract. The moment and then the key is, I mean, it's a whole lot of, um, of value chain that's developing. And that's what COVID-19 is also going to fast track. So we are talking of, um, of blockchain. It's, it's, it's an industry on its own. And what it means is that ordinarily lawyers are in the middle of these transactions. Now, I'm not saying lawyers will be removed, but lawyers are going to be repositioned. So instead of being in the middle, you are not going to be at the end, at the beginning. And it's only those that know about blockchain and smart contracts that will be relevant at the beginning in order to know, okay, these are the sequences, these are the protocols. And it's important you know that, okay? So, sorry, I, I said I don't want to confuse you on blockchain, so let me just leave it on that. Then, what softwares? Um, I always try when I have this um, rare opportunity to talk, I try not to convert it to, um, to a, 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 a marketing or a sales, a sales platform, because I respect the people that actually invite me. So that, that's why if you notice, I, I haven't talked so much about people have done products or whatever. But since you have asked this question, then um, I will take the, I will ask for the leave of the hosts. <laughs> the person will say, okay, some of the software, buy Love Pavilion. And I will tell you three main products we have. One is you've known the law reports. The law report is coming with textbook and journals in the next two weeks. Then with legal analytics, we have case management system, which we have rebuilt now to factor in remote hearing and to factor in e-filing. And so there's a lot of things that we were putting apart from the AI part of it. Then we have the, um, the, 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 um, the, the templates for your agreements. We have the template for all your court forms, which is on our solicitors and arbitrators toolkit. Now, of course, all of them come at different pricing. Now, I know someone will ask me, these things cost money. Yes, someone say, if you say education is expensive, try ignorance. But at this point, last month, we had one month 50% discount and it has expired. But because this question was asked, on the honor of the host, I will, and I'm very careful with my choice of word now, <laughs> I will extend a 50% discount for everyone that's in this webinar for this week. And the code for that is Penthouse 2020. That's the code for payment. And please, it's only for this week. You have 50% discount. Thank you very Ooh. much. Thank you very much. I was, I was just going to get to Thank you, sir. Are you, not going to, are you not going to do some giveaway? Everybody's on Twitter. It's, that. That. it's <laughs> only for those on this platform. Only those <laughs> in this webinar. <laughs> so I'm much. going to take the list of everyone that logged in. <laughs> Thank you very, very much. Uh, the people that logged in are big time, 150. Well, those are extra at 700, they have a long list. It's <laughs> the 150. It's only, it's only the 150 that has <laughs> that opportunity. And it's just this week. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Olivia, sir. You know, one thing I would say so that we can, we can round this up, we try to ensure that our interactive sessions are not too long. We're going to have another one next Tuesday at 4 p.m. And um, it's going to be massive. It's going to be mind-blowing next week Tuesday. Last week Tuesday was, 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 was awesome too with Professor Pat who told me. And he was looking at the economy um, of the COVID-19, you know, looking at how businesses will thrive. There's something that Prof said, Professor who told me last week, and Mr. Lucas has said the same thing again as if he was on that platform. And that thing is the fact that in the time of recession like this, it's like in the time of war, there is what we call a wealth transfer. Newer people become wealthier. People that used to be wealthy before may mm. not remain wealthy. The difference is going to be what you know and what you like right. what you know. And that is the whole idea of this interactive session. And I want to urge all of us, in this time, Data may still be expensive, but somehow you have to understand that it has become priority. Your access to the internet, your access to the World Wide Web has become very, very critical to your advancement. It is as important as the books you used to buy, as important and even more important than even the law reports you used to buy. Now the information is available. It is what you do with it that is going to make the difference. Now, how do you take it from here? Because that was one question I, I wanted us to answer here. I know we can't finish it today, but 
Everybody's asking, okay, use technology, use technology, use technology. How am I going to use the technology? Am I just going to talk to technology? <laughs> Let me just make it simple. <laughs> and Mr. Afway has done that. I'll just read it through it. Start with things that are very simple. Simple being that, number one, if you are not using a smartphone and you can afford one, please get one. It doesn't have to be an iPhone. If you do not have data or you have the kind of data that you always have to switch off and switch on, you may have to have something that is regular because you want to be reachable at one dial. And I'll tell you an experience that paid me so much. I have a particular phone I used to use for a while. And after some time, I stopped using it. That phone actually has a WhatsApp number on it. It's one of my WhatsApp lines. So I didn't get to open the WhatsApp anymore. I started using another WhatsApp number. Now, I opened it recently about three days ago. I was just a bit less busy. I said, okay, let me just activate the WhatsApp on this phone and then read up. And the messages came down in their thousands that have been on that WhatsApp line because I was using a different line. Two of those messages were from people who had contacted me at the heat, in the heat of the moment from countries outside of Nigeria. Sometime I have traveled before now, and that was the number I gave to them. That was the only WhatsApp number they had. And by the time they went online, that was the number they got. They had briefed me on that WhatsApp line, and unfortunately, I never saw it. Now I'm seeing the brief, but it's actually a month late. And so it was still. And so as much as possible, your emails should drop like your text message on your phone. I'm trying to make it very simple, breaking it down. Make sure your email drops. As much as possible, if you work in a law firm or you run a law firm, ensure you have a website. At the start with one. There are basic websites, and then maybe after now, if you want information as regards, oh, can I get somebody that can do this for me cheaply? Can you get some, you know, basic stuff are things you should start with. And then you need to begin to open your mind to technology. Lawyers don't like numbers. See, this is not about zeros and ones. We're not talking about zeros and ones. We're not saying we all have to start coding. But it is the fact that we must know what people like Mr. Akwe Lugasa is doing with all those things that he's selling to us. And then you have to understand how they work so that you can be able to appreciate what he's saying. And this information, is free. They are all online. I'm going to share, I think I'll share the link, I'll share again, of a WhatsApp group of lawyers. We're already on group two. We have about um, 400 lawyers already. Um, we call it law as a business, and then every now and then it's free to join, so don't run away. Every now and then people ask questions that have to do with the business of law. And in that group, what we try to do is to excite ourselves about the things that are coming up um, and the opportunities that are going to be available, and we try to collaborate. The new game is going to require collaboration. But beyond collaboration, one of the things I will tell you the new game will require in the future of law is what I call monopoly. People like Law, law Pavilion for many years enjoyed monopoly. And even till now, they have competitors, but I think that they are still enjoying some kind of a monopoly. But let me also tell you something that will happen. It's not going to be enough for you to be popular. It's not going to be enough for you to be a big boy. It's going to be very important for you to become relevant for you to have traction, and for you to be able to make valuable impact in people's lives. And that is what you have to start thinking as a lawyer. It's not just about filing cases in court. It's not about arguing briefs. And then you'll find out, with due respect to the learned students that are on, in this webinar, uh, I, I, I'm sorry I did not recognize earlier, we, we, we acknowledge you and the um, national executives that have joined in. Um, I see some members of um, state uh, and, and branches of MBA. Thank you for coming. But you see, a time is, has come now where you will find out that a learned senior advocate may stand and somebody will stand before him. And people will ask the learned senior advocate to excuse them for them to talk to the person that is beside him. And that is going to be the beauty of what is happening now. It's a level up. And the much senior colleagues that we have now, you must begin to treasure the younger ones around you and draw them closer so that they can help you to migrate into what has come to stay. And whether you like it or not, it has taken over without your permission. Like I said in my, in, in my, in my chat last week, and I said, okay, the law has a business uh, WhatsApp group I talked about. I said, COVID-19 came. It did not ask us for permission. It did not ask, it did not file any motion or notice. It just came and told all of us, come on, go home, sit down, lock your office. And it gave us instructions. I've not seen anybody that has been so, so proud enough to boast that he prepared for it or that he saw it coming. The best I've seen is that I've seen people who say they have been thinking about the future and they have been preparing for the future. So when COVID-19 came, they only adjusted. What you need to do is to understand that the game has changed. First thing, change your mindset. Adjust to the new normal. Allow things to happen. Be fluid. And so stop worrying about what things used to be. Understand that things are not going to be the same. 
and I'll round up on this note. There is something that is always called a pioneer advantage. And more like every decade or every now and then, that opportunity comes up where some new people are allowed to take over. And most of the time, the people that pioneer those changes don't get to ever relinquish power. I'll give you a quick example. I was having a conversation with Salud Hassan. And I said, some people in the generation of the Shugumi Balogun of FCMB, Yoko Yakomos, um, the Baba Gebu, you know, that, that category of people. There are some of them that have been in power for as long as I have lived. It means I, I was born to know them as billionaires. I was born to know them as the controllers of, and movers and shakers of the world. And to date, they are still controlling their stuff. There's a generation that you find the likes of Aliko Dangote, Tony Elumelu, Adenuga, and you know, they are in this kind of clique. For as long as I can think, they have been billionaires and they have been controlling things. There are other generations that have come after them. But let me tell you the good news so that I don't waste your time. It is another opportunity. And the likes of your sincerely, Charles Ajiboy, are beginning to take position and position so that we can take advantage of this time. And so that when we take advantage of this time, 30, 40 years time, we are going to hold on to it. Because the rule of the game is that we will continue to change and we will continue to reinvent ourselves. We will continue to reinvent. And so I want to welcome all of us because I need lawyers that are angry to set the pace. The judiciary is moving at a very slow pace. And it's sad. Uh, one, one of these days we'll have a discourse around it, but I'm just tired about a lot of discussion, discussion. I wish we could just change. And I, I told this to Alou Gazan, I'm, I'm beginning to think about it. How individuals and the private sector is going to force government and it's going to force institutions to change. And that is going to happen because this has now created an opportunity for such things to happen. So for those of you that are interested, for those of you that are, are willing and you want to be part of that of our conversation, the group is very regulated. So it's not a group that you can go and be making posts um, every now and then or sharing. No, it's not for, for, for plenty of, um, of, 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 of um, storytelling. It's a group where we have serious conversations once in a while, and then you can share thoughts, you can have people um, give answers to what you have. I'm going to drop that link here. So um, if, if, I think I've dropped it earlier, in fact. So you may just want to scroll up and um, find um, where I put it there. And then you need to listen to this video again. Most of the time, we are trying to talk very fast because we want to respect people's time, and we don't want to uh, um, abuse the privilege you are giving to us to have your attention. But you need to take your time. Um, this video, take your time. It's streaming live on Facebook, so it will be saved on my Facebook page after now. Look for me on Facebook, Charles Ajiboye, you'll find it there. I will also upload it on Charles Ajiboye um, 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 YouTube. Uh, I have about 20 videos also that are on YouTube for those that may be willing to, to learn some stuff. I'm going to put also my YouTube link there. If you care for it, you have some time. There are usually very, very short videos. I've also posted my, my, my YouTube uh, uh, um, channel there. Find time, read, and beyond what you can hear from someone like me, open your mind to information. And once you get that information, please, as much as possible, run with it. Somebody's asking me to drop a link to the WhatsApp group again. I've done it before. I will do it again for the third time in your chat. You need to copy it out or, 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 or click it before I end the video because it's going to disappear from there. And then the YouTube um, channel, too, is going to disappear from there. So if you want to just copy it and put it somewhere else, and then take your time to watch it. In the next one week, I will also be dropping some videos on the future of law. Those ones will be wonderful. Amateur videos will but the content will be rich. I want to thank you very much, Mr. Paul Lugaza. You always, always, always amaze me with your simplicity. Anybody that sees you will think Lord Pavilion is just some kind of office in one three bedroom flat. You will not know you operate from that mansion with those hundreds of people that you are <laughs> <laughs> 50 liars are 500 people already. <laughs> Not to talk about the tech people. And I thank you for the inspiration that you have been. And um, I thank you because you also understand that uh, this, oh, someone said that link is not working. Which of the links so that I don't end the video without um, um, putting the right um, link out? So, but then I will also drop my number so that should I end this video and you need, I, I think it's working because I see that uh, people have used it already. You may want to, to check, except the group is now full. So if it is full and you cannot, they're trying to join, you cannot join. Because I think the second group again is full. So if, if it is full and you cannot join, it's okay. 
um, what I'm going to do is uh, you will be able to reach out to me and then um, we'll share the next link because we will not be able to keep everybody here for you to... Sorry, Charles. What did you say? Somebody was saying something. Yeah, yes, I'm um, sorry. I wanted to drop a number for, um, for, the, for those that want to take advantage of the promo. Okay, yeah, the to promo, call. please. You have the number typed the, out. That, so I, I'm just sending it on the, um, on the chat now. Beautiful. So you should just call Benedict and Moha. I've sent it now. Um, 003-209-1796. So that's the, that's the number to call. Now, for those of you that did not hear when he said it, I will just explain to you what he has done. Uh, the, where is the number? Please take advantage of the offer. Kindly call Mrs. Benita Moa. Okay, that's beautiful. So that's 50% off anything that uh, Love Pavilion does. We did not discuss this. We are not marketing. But that this, me, is this is only one you. week. <laughs> Please <laughs> let me let me say this, say it again. It's only for this week. Okay. Yes, please, because... <laughs> so if you have a problem with joining um, the WhatsApp group or finding any of my links or whatever, you can just call the number I, I put there. Um, if, you, if you cannot join that link, I, can, I, I may not be able to work on that now, but you can chat that number I put there for the WhatsApp link, for the YouTube link, for the, for the Facebook link, whatsoever. But please make sure you watch this video again and let us get ready for the future. It's going to be awesome, and I look forward to seeing you there. Once again, Mr. Okolugasa, I thank you for being here. Mr. Belushi, Mr. Mr. Jacka Jones, um, thank you for being here. Mr. Debola Lema, I cite you. Um, Mr. Bakari, Mr. Tundi Oju, thank you very much. Mr. Isaac Abu, Mr. Uzoma Benjamin, Mr. Funko, Ms. Funke Enshot, thank you very much, all of you, for, for making our time. Yeah, Mr. Tommy Bukwola, um, Mr. Wale Fash. Thank you very, very much. I see all of you, and I'm glad that you made it out to be here. Next week, Tuesday, please make it a date. If you registered for this event, then you don't have a problem. We will do well to send you the link for next week's interactive session. If you did not register and you found yourself here, you may have to find a way of registry. We normally do not publicize the link. So once again, I want to thank you for, for being here for, with us. And... Um, I wish you the very best. For those of you that have joined the WhatsApp group, we are going to continue our conversation on the WhatsApp group. We always have that conversation. And that's much more personal. So I'll see you on the WhatsApp group if you are there. And if you are not there, I'll see you next week if you care to be Mr. Paul Lucas, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. Can I end the meeting thank you. now? Thank you. Have you copied all the numbers you need to copy? Have you copied all the links you need to take? Um, so that I can end the meeting now. Are we all fine? All right, then. Bye. Bye.